This is Electric Universe Eyes, and today I wanted to talk about Hurricane Dorian on September 1st. It's 4.13 Central Standard Time. I'm in Texas, but there's a hurricane about to uh, hit Florida. And the question is, is it going to turn north or is it going to barrel west? And I have been uh, looking at some of the past hurricanes and storm systems using nullschool.net. Uh, it's earth.nullschool.net. Uh, and it gives you the different layers all the way from the surface up one, two, three, four, five, six, seven additional layers into the atmosphere of data from satellites and uh, sensors on the planet that are measuring all kinds of, of things. So this data gives us a clear picture of how these storms are moving around the planet, how the winds are moving and where the energy is coming from. So if we just start at uh, on Earth, when you load it up, it's going to look like look like this. Actually, it will start default here under height by surface. So I'll close this out. This is generally what it's going to look like when you first go to Earth.noschool.net. So you can see down here by Florida, we've got uh, Hurricane Dorian, and it's just been trending west. And some people are saying, well, it's going to bend north. Uh, but it's looking like it's just going to barrel into to Florida. And they just raised it to a Category 4 hurricane today. And people are freaking out going, why didn't they tell us? We would have we would have left. Um, you know, so again, we're trying to I'm trying to figure out how can forecasting be made better. And from my understanding of electricity and how currents work, you have opposing charges. You have a positive and a negative. You could think of that as an in and an out, an up and a down, an on and an off. Low pressure, high pressure. It's the exact same thing. You have two different forces of energy. One's going to be hotter. One's going to be colder. One's going to go up into the atmosphere. One is going to push down towards the ground from the atmosphere. When those two layers converge, you have a dielectric breakdown. You have a breakdown in a capacitance layer that is merging a positive and a negative and it's it's like the yin yang symbol and it creates a vortex right where these energies are merging so when you look into the eye of a hurricane or a tornado system um, you know a hurricane is pushing inward a tornado is sucking outward so over the water it's pushing inward because it's got a, a direct connection into the water if this is electricity coming from the uppermost level of the atmosphere towards the earth uh, water is a very easy conductor so it's going to just suck in this energy and then when it hits the land it seems like it it tries to reverse and that's where you get a lot of tornadoes because you've got a different level of charge or capacitance on dry land or on the continents versus what's in the ocean so hopefully that helps with uh, at least my understanding how i see it so I might not be wrong in, in right in anything that I'm saying, but um, I'm just trying to explain to you how I see this electrically. All right, so we'll click back over here on Earth, and uh, we'll go up in surface layer. Uh, I'm sorry, in height from surface, we'll go up to 1,000 HPA. So this is one atmospheric layer up from surface. All right, and we'll go up to 850, another higher layer. And you can start to see this vortex increasing in width. And then you start to see these other wind patterns up above the higher you get into the clouds. We'll go to 700. You can kind of see this tighten up over here, and this is getting wider. 500. Now you can see kind of this level uh, up north is trending east, and then we've got this other air again going west, and then it's kind of pinching back going, uh, going northeast here. Then we jump up to 250. Now look, it's a tighter spiral again, but then you've got some dramatic airflow up here. And this is usually across the country, this is the jet stream, um, usually bends down towards Texas and then back up through the Newark area. So um, go up to 71 higher level and now look, all of this wind is going west across go up even to the highest layer that we have measurements for 10 hpa and look how fast that airflow is now let's check this out i want to back out so you can see the uppermost level of our atmosphere how the winds are actually moving so you can see this entire band covering the entire middle section of the earth is 
trending west. That's a hard west. And the, the, uh, the color scheme you can see here, this scale. So when we're in the reds and the pinks, um, you know, that's, that's a lot, it's a lot faster movement than down in these blues and greens, kind of like we got down here or at the top. So check out all these pinks and getting into whites surrounding Antarctica. And generally when I look at this at 10 HPA, uh, this, this circular band is actually more centralized over Antarctica, but it looks like it's, it's bent up all the way into, um, into South America. So this I look at as a Birkeland current going into the planet. And if you go by the right hand rule, you know, you take your right hand and you curl your fingers and the four fingers are going to be pointing in the direction of the current spinning, the movement of that magnetic field spinning, and your thumb is going to point in the direction that the current's moving or traveling towards. So by that right hand rule, I see here on the South Pole that we've got an incoming current uh, on the South Pole. But then you notice up above, uh, we've got, it's kind of, kind of looks very peaceful right now at the top of the pole almost like the pole has stopped and sometimes it's pretty active uh, but we've got this huge red band that's just uh, just like a giant belt wrapping around the planet right now so if if we spin this around I, I want you to see kind of how these are kind of converging between this neutral zone this would be a very peaceful area right now all this blue right here is peaceful um, you know at least in this atmospheric level uh, and then it kind of pinches together right here so anyway, now that you see that, now I want to um, go back over here at this full scale view and let's back down now. Let's back down to 70 HPA. And you can see these winds up here in the uh, uh, Northern American Canada is moving east. And then right here, kind of towards the middle, kind of Mexico area is all moving west. But look at this, 250. Here you go. You see these jet streams. This jet stream is just arching over America and back up. And we've got this huge kind of cyclone over here with the counter rotating cyclone trailing right behind it. And then what do we have down here in this conveyor belt? We've got the beginning of the hurricane. You jump back up to 70. There's nothing here. You can't really see it. But you see the, these opposing winds at this layer. This band right here is the very top level of that jet stream. And then we've got this middle band wrapping around back to the west. And you can see how these two, uh, all of this stuff moving to the right is part of that incoming electrical signal at the bottom pole. So try to keep that in mind. It's, it's a bunch of 2D layers, essentially, that I'm trying to scroll through what the animation of the 3D would look. And I, I really wish we just had a 3D model where I could see how the energy is going from the uppermost layer all the way down to the hurricane so i can kind of go into 3d mode like on uh, google earth and i can tilt it sideways and see perspective if there's any software developers out there uh, th this is my dream if you can put this together of take google earth and things like no school uh it just a data aggregation of satellite information and information across the world of weather stations if all of this stuff can somehow be integrated into one <laughs> powerful but easy to use web application i would be very happy so anyway i'll shut up now let's go down to 850 1000 and the surface and it seems very weak at this point and it and it should because this is where it's focusing down to the capacitive layer of our planet right from the atmosphere which is very malleable so we've got the hurricane here and you can see even on surface level winds you've got the the winds moving to the west right but check this out when we move into ocean and we see how these ocean uh, this is the ocean waves what i wanted to show was the current the ocean current is actually moving towards that upper level atmosphere kind of following that um, that incoming charge, if you will, or following that trending northern portion of that Birkeland current as it's 
diving through those atmospheric layers. That's what I'm going to call it. Uh, but again, if you're if you look at Donald Scott's Birkeland current model, um, take that model, which is a perfect circle inside of a perfect circle inside of a perfect circle, and you have counter rotating charges. Well, our atmosphere is not a perfect circle. It's a big expanded globe and it's got continents and it's got water and it's got air with all kinds of different awesome gases in it. So what do you do? You put electricity into this big plasma ball we call Earth and it's going to move between all these different plasma layers. Um, you're going to have moving charge, moving in opposition throughout, across and dispersing across the globe as best as electricity can. And what, it's, what electricity does is looks for the path of least resistance. And guess what? The path of least resistance right now is uh, in Florida, and it's it's headed over. And hopefully it doesn't hit Florida. But uh, from what I am seeing, my guess is that it is going to hit land. Uh, the only thing that I can see could, could diverge that is uh, some of these winds up here. Uh, one thing I noticed at 250 where the jet stream is, is you see this dramatic line right here. If this continues to push eastward about the time this makes landfall, that, if this extends out, that could draw it back up. So, again, that's why nobody can predict exactly what's going to happen with this, this thing. But I think if we can continue to refine our tools and use everything that we have and come up with, with better ideas to uh, develop future warning systems, I'm all for it. And I'd love to help. So um, I really hope you guys learned something on at least how to use earth.noschool.net. Um, I'm, I'm not the expert at it. I just enjoy this tool. And I think it's fascinating to see all the different layers of our atmosphere and how things actually connect around our planet. Um, check this out. Just again, that's beautiful, isn't it? Look at that. I like 250 looking at this because you really get to see how are these uh, kind of spinning vortices moving around the planet. So take a look at it, check it out, play with it, uh, have fun with it. If you're in Florida, be safe. Wish you all the best.